2017 was the year when activism, I think, really went mainstream. We've talked about for years about how activists can reach any company, they can attack large, iconic, uh, blue chip companies around the world, national champions. In 2017, it really happened. There were multiple high profile campaigns, companies with significant market caps, greater than 50 billion, national champions, iconic companies found themselves under attack from activists. Over $62 billion in capital was deployed this year. What's significant about that is that uh, no company is safe. Uh, every company needs to be thinking about itself like an activist would, and uh, it, it also doesn't matter what geography they're in. Activists are looking around the world for opportunities. Based on what happened in 2017 with shareholder activists, here's what we're telling companies to do in 2018. Number one, they have to think about themselves the way an activist would. Activists look for discounts to intrinsic value. That's what they're focused on. They're good stock pickers. They're looking for value opportunities. Companies need to do the same for themselves. They need to have meetings with their boards. They need to study their own vulnerabilities and see if they can identify the pockets of vulnerability like an activist would. Second thing is, is that they need to be out in front with their shareholders. Activists derive their influence and their power from their relationships with other shareholders. The other shareholders don't support the activists. The activist campaign is dead in the water. So what companies need to do is get out in front, be proactive in their engagement with shareholders, and get directors involved. The final thing is governance. There's a big focus today on governance. We all read about BlackRock's letter. There are other shareholders who put out policy papers about ESG issues, environmental, social governance issues. Governance is a real point of vulnerability. Boards in the United States and globally need to think about who's on the board because that is a, uh, it's, it's one of the first places activists will go when they're looking for vulnerabilities. What I think is happening, and it's very similar to what happened in the, in the, in the world of private equity, is that after the early sort of swashbuckling days um, when private equity guys were described as raiders, um, you saw a period where private equity firms really started to focus on areas where they were quite good. Geographies, market cap sizes, sectors. I think that's what's going on with activists and we're seeing a bifurcation. You're seeing you know, many activists who are trying this for the first time, who maybe are multi-sector investors, and then you're seeing the leading activists. The leading activists increasingly know what sectors they feel comfortable working in and they're hiring bankers and lawyers and communication experts in those sectors. They know what geographies they feel comfortable working in and they know what size company they like. Some of the activists are increasingly running very concentrated portfolios, so that allows them to amass capital and make much larger investments in a select group of companies and therefore go after the larger companies. If I had to point out any activist who I think is particularly interesting and is in the vanguard of this, it would probably be Elliott. Elliott launched 19 campaigns in 2018. They have a global organization, team in Asia, team in Europe, team in the United States. They invest in resources. They're three times the size of any other activists and it shows up in the number of campaigns they're, they're capable of mounting. I think the old guard, new guard uh, is, is an interesting distinction. What I'm focused on, and I think Elliot def definitely represents the old guard continuing to be the new guard and the leader, but what I'm, I'm interested in in 2018 are what are the new sort of buckets of capital that come into activism? Does private equity start to play a greater role in activism? Do traditional active managers extend capital or participate in activist campaigns? Are there sidecar investment vehicles? Does an activist come into a story and then, then call up the traditional shareholders and say, you know, rather than uh, you, know, you guys waiting for us to create value, do you want to participate in the value creating opportunity? And we're seeing the, the early stages of this. In late 2017, we saw a number of situations where um, traditional family offices and private equity money actually teamed up with activists to boost the amount of capital activists could put to play and invest in companies. And really, really what that is, is what it's saying is that activism is not about 
a particular limited set of investors who do it or an asset class. It's really a set of tactics. And the question for investors are, are you willing to participate in it?